is the Savage Nation. Look, I could talk more about the economy and the, the video game thing and Hillary Clinton acting like a, an academician. It would get us nowhere. I want to spend a few minutes about the rise of Nazism and the rise of Mussolini's uh, black shirts for a couple of reasons that you'll come to understand. And I don't have a lot of time to do this. I could spend hours on it. I've been studying this most of my life. We are living through a revolutionary time with a revolutionary president, with a revolutionary administration, as sure as I'm sitting here. Only you don't know it. Because these people who I've called neo-Marxists are more, you know, it's a, it's a phrase to get your attention. They're more clearly Fabian socialists, which I've defined earlier on the show. And again, I don't want to define any of these terms for you right now. But I want you to understand that you are, um, you are in the hands of a revolutionary socialist named Obama, no matter how you try to spin it. He wants very stringent control of private economic, the private economic system. Now, Mussolini began his career as a revolutionary socialist. You may not even know who he was. He was the dictator of Italy at the same time that Hitler was the dictator of Germany, at the same time as Stalin was the dictator of France. And he was the editor of a paper, Mussolini, a newspaper. And uh, he moved on and on. And uh, there was tremendous revolution going on in Italy at the time. The government was weak and indecisive, and I should say corrupt. And in Italy, there was a communist upheaval that seemed possible to many. And Mussolini felt much the same patriotic discomfort as Hitler did. And he began to organize a national movement of black shirts, the fascisti. They wanted firm government control, not only of the people, but of financial and business controls. Now, Obama has done the latter, but not the former. Thus far, Obama, in less than a month, has achieved what it took these people 10 years to do. Firm government control of financial and business, but he's not yet induced a firm government control of the masses. Not yet. And who supported Mussolini in the beginning? Tremendous support from the big industrialists and financiers supported Mussolini because they were afraid of the red revolutionaries uh, in expropriating their, their wealth. And they thought that after Mussolini served his purpose as a strike breaker, they would be able to control him. Sound familiar? They feared the reds too much and the uh, Mussoliniites too little. His theory of corporate state of the corporate state implied a strong control of private economics. This is exactly what we're seeing right now. And so his movement kept going on and on and on. And uh, in October of 1922, the March Upon Rome occurred. That was a seizure of power by the fascist organization. And thereafter, Mussolini's rise was rapid and uninterrupted. In the beginning, the Mussolini um, dictatorship, by the way, was not anti-Semitic at all. That was the difference between the Italian fascists and the German fascists. The Nazis were diehard racists, primarily against the Jews. They used the Jews as a scapegoat. And consequently, the Jews suffered terribly as a result of this. And I should define again the difference between the, uh, the fascist revolution in Italy and the fascist revolution in Germany uh, was distinctly different in that regard. There was no racism in the fascists of, of Italy initially, initially. But Hitler imposed it upon Mussolini, Mussolini later on. He made him uh, do it. Those of you who know anything about the history of uh, fascism in Italy know exactly what I'm talking about. But you see, Germany was broken after World War I with tremendous debt payments from the League of Nations. Not only did Germany lose the war, but Germany had to be kept down. That's what the uh, United Nations of the time said. Germany had to be kept down. The League of Nations said, keep them down. And so they try to break Germany even further, and they had the, the problems that I've described before of runaway inflation and whatnot. And in the midst of all of this, a new voice became audible amongst the, uh, the clatter. It was an angry voice. It was an angry, strident voice, but it said what millions of crazed, distraught Germans had uh, been feeling, that Germany had been cheated and betrayed. Germany had been cheated and betrayed, and that Germany need to have the pride that it once had occupied before 1914 restored and this voice said that Germany had not been defeated on the battlefield he said that Germany had been betrayed from within she had been betrayed in particular by her intellectuals by the communist international uh, by the academics and uh, by the Jews and then he called about 
the nation to return to its racial roots, to the strenuous warrior life of the ancient Aryan Teuton. And this was the voice of the Austrian painter Adolf Hitler. And it had a horrible appeal to the vast and growing mobs of adolescents who had no prospects in life. They were unemployed. And so he appealed to the unemployed. And they developed an organization that spread. And that organization was a political party called the National Socialists. Emphasis on the word socialist. Many of you don't understand that Hitler was a socialist. National Socialism, Nazism, was a socialist movement. Many of you are in denial about that. And so here are two extremes of fascist movements, Germany, Italy. What does it have to do with the, the uh, confusion you're living through now in America? Everything. 